It seems most anime and manga that come out these days star children or teenage characters. It's sort of odd for us American audiences to be seeing these series, especially when they're supposed to be written for teenagers. Yes, series like One Piece and Naruto are actually rated T for teens. Of course, this doesn't mean that the kids who read them are in any trouble or anything. It's just that you wouldn't often expect someone who looks like this to be the star of a teenage manga. Two weeks ago, I got a comment from a user named Matthew Kelly, who wanted to know if I had any manga recommendations for his daughter. Well, Matt, this video is for you. These are my top five manga for kids. Now, before I get started, there are three very important things I think parents should know before they buy manga for kids. The first is that not all manga is intended for children. Yes, not all manga is for kids. In fact, most of what you would find on the shelves of Barnes & Noble are rated T for teens. If you're confused about whether a comic book series is for kids or not, all you have to do is look on the back. Chances are they'll have a little thing on the bottom of the book telling you whether or not it's age-appropriate for your child. Another quick way is to go ahead and skim through the book. Just look, see if you find anything that's out of place. And you know what's great about manga is that it takes a lot less time to read a manga volume than it does to read a novel. You can skim through these, speed read these in 15 or 20 minutes if you're going fast. It's really, really, really easy to find problematic content in manga. Another thing I recommend is to read and do the research yourself. Uh, these days, everybody's got a smartphone. I got a smartphone. I take this with me everywhere I go shopping. If I find a manga and I'm confused about the price, I'm like, hey, that looks a little pricey. I go search for it on Amazon or leather website and see if I can get a lower price for it. Likewise, you can actually do your research on series. You know, if I'm confused about this series in particular, I can go look up information online and see if this would be problematic content for a child. Another thing you can do is to ask employees. If you're at a comic book store, if you're at Barnes & Noble, if you're at the library, please, please, please ask other adults there what they think about certain manga. If you're confused, you have no idea what a series is, they can often tell you what it's about, uh, things you might need to be worried about, and especially, they can give you some tidbits if for whatever reason, and I have seen this happen, there is no age rating on the back of the comic. So just keep that in mind. The third is that every kid is different. There's going to be some kids who are going to be able to handle that preteen, teenage content, and then there's going to be some older kids who maybe aren't ready for the content that's supposed to be for their age range. It really just depends on your kid and what's suitable for them or not. With that out of the way, let's get to my top five manga. My first recommendation is She's Sweet Home by Konata Konami. It is very, very, very cute. It almost reminds me of Winnie the Pooh in its humor and style, although it's definitely for a much older kid audience than Winnie the Pooh. Uh, the comedy comes from misunderstandings between the family and the cat. The cat's thoughts are revealed to the reader, but the family doesn't know what's going on. One particular scene I can think of is when a neighbor's cat walks into the house and eats cheese food. She has no way of communicating to the family what's actually going on. So the humor comes in the fact that the family's like, Oh, you ate your lunch. Good kitty. Good kitty. And the cat's like, No, no, you don't understand. This big bear-like cat came in and ate all my food. And they're like, Oh, you did such a good job eating your food. Hooray! And they're cheering. And the cat's just like, Why? You can find Cheese Sweet Home at Barnes & Noble, Amazon.com, and other sellers. I noticed that there is actually a what's called a complete collection out for Cheese Sweet Home. You can definitely save money by buying this. It's three volumes in one. So you'd be paying about $20 for three volumes versus $10 per volume. So yeah, I would definitely recommend that route. My next recommendation is the Legend of Zelda manga adaptation by Akira Himakawa. I absolutely adore this manga as a Zelda fan. In fact, I have the entire box set of published comics in America. I, yeah, I really, really like this. I will say this, though. I was actually surprised. They toned down the violence for a lot of these uh, video games. In fact, the Ocarina of Time adaptation doesn't even feature the Shadow Temple, which is probably the most controversial part of that game. I know a lot of kids will read just because they're familiar with the content in other contexts. You know, a kid who likes basketball will read a book about basketball. Likewise, if your kid loves The Legend of Zelda, I would definitely recommend The Legend of Zelda manga. They will adore it, and to be honest, it's a really great read. 
You can find The Legend of Zelda manga at Barnes & Noble, Amazon.com, and other sellers. I would recommend that box set, though. It is a very cheap way to own all of them, and I love it. Next up is Saint Tail by Megumi Tachikawa. Saint Tail is a magical girl who does not use magic to fight crime, but uses magic tricks. Go figure! This one's a little bit of an odd one. It's a... how do I put this the right way? It's a Catholic-inspired Robin Hood tale. Saint Tail, what she does is she steals items that were wrongfully gained and gives them back to their proper owners. This one's a careful recommendation because there is some Catholic-inspired content in this manga. Whether or not you want that for your kid is up to you. I have found that the Catholic faith of many of the characters only plays a minimal part in the story. It basically is just the baseline for all of the good that the characters decide to do. If you are Catholic, though, this is a pretty exciting manga to read because it's very, very, very rare to find this sort of thing, especially from a Japanese context. This one is... I really, really want to recommend it because it's probably one of the most kid-friendly magical girl manga out there. Unfortunately, there's no real way to get it new now. It was licensed by Tokyopop and... It expired in 2002. Unfortunately, the only way I was able to find this manga was used on Amazon.com or on eBay. It really is a shame because it's one of the most age-appropriate magical girl stories I can think of. It's absolutely brilliant. It's super clever and super cute. If you can find Saint Tail, definitely get it for your kids, uh, but that might be a tough one to get. Next up is Pokemon Adventures, written by Hidenori Kazuka, with art by Mato. Just, just forget everything you know about the Pokemon anime. This is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about Pokemon Adventures. Pokemon Adventures is an adaptation of the video games. Instead of following one boy throughout his many adventures, the Pokemon Adventures comic details several characters. So for the Red and Blue series, they follow a boy named Red. For Gold and Silver, they follow a boy named Gold, etc, etc. The characters in Pokemon Adventures are smart, they're witty, they really, really take the time to understand their place in the world. It's not all just Charizard, use Fire Blast, you know, they'll come up with a solution using their Pokemon that is very applicable to real life. You know, they'll say, oh, well, the powers went on in the building, you know, what can we use to turn the power back on? You know, maybe an electric Pokemon. It's... It's just so smart and so clever, and the story is really, really good. In fact, I was quite surprised. I picked up the first four volumes used, and I was alarmed by how clever it was. It is, again, nothing like the original anime. And from what I understand, the Pokemon Adventures comic is still continuing on today. This is a comic I would highly recommend for your kids. Uh, they can pick it up pretty much any place in the series that they want. You know, for example, if they're really, really into... I don't know, the Diamond and Pearl games. They can pick it up where Diamond and Pearl starts and they'll be perfectly fine. Uh, so yeah, this is a manga I would highly recommend and you can find it again at Amazon.com, Barnes Noble, and other sellers. And finally, my last recommendation is Yotsuba And by Kiyohiko Azuma. Yotsuba And is praised by many manga fans, young and old. I mean, this series is absolutely brilliant. It's about a young girl who moves to a new town with her father and... That's about all I can say about it. The entire series is what's called a slice of life. Basically, there's no plot. Uh, it's just about Yotsuba growing up, meeting new friends, meeting new adults in her life, and it's an absolute joy. It really, really is. It's also a really nice way to expose children to other cultures. Yotsuba participates in activities that normal Japanese kids might do, like cicada catching. It's really super interesting in a way, and it's just absolutely adorable. Yotsuba is one of the cutest, funniest characters in manga today. This is one of the few stories that I can recommend equally to both children and adults. Children will find this to be very funny. Adults will look at it as sort of like, almost like a time capsule of what it was like to be young, and how clever and wonderful children really can be. You can find this manga at Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble, and other sellers. Again, as a parent, just use your best discretion when it comes to choosing manga for your child. Do it the same way you would for a book or a regular comic. Just do your research, ask questions, and hey, read it yourself. I guarantee you that manga will bring joy to you and your child. Uh, if you like what you saw here, please like and subscribe. I would really, really appreciate it. It does help me out. 
And until next time, this is CJ signing off.